It's better to be disappointed than lied to, in my opinion. Hey everyone, today we're doing a little bit of a different video about trading and what the general scope of it looks like to broader society, even though I generally create videos that talk about how to approach trading safely and effectively. A lot of you guys didn't get an introduction as to why I started doing this in the first place and why it is so important that content like this exists for free. I'm going to be talking on this pretty extensively, and this isn't going to be a super informative video in the sense of you're going to learn how to build a trading strategy or test a new macroeconomic concept. This is going to be more of an informative video around why trading has become such a widespread opportunity for fraud and corruption in the younger social media area and why investing as a whole has come sort of gamified and closer to gambling over the last couple of years. I'll be diving pretty deep into that. It's a really interesting topic and it, it means a lot to me and it it might resonate closely with you as well if you find yourself already following along with some of my more heavy, technically dense videos already. So the first issue that is causing trading to become such a widespread problem is social media. And I'm not saying anything new here. We know how social media works, but we might not re be able to connect the dots between how social media works and how trading is becoming the number one reason that people in my generation lose their money. More than sports betting, more than just gambling, more than any other way of losing money is, is day trading because it, for a couple of reasons. And social media is the first one that we're going to touch on. Social media is designed to hold your attention and get you excited about something and keep you engaged with something for a short period of time. That is what tells algorithms that it is worth promoting. Now, there's a lot of content on social media that takes advantage of specifically this fact. The idea that trading can be something exciting is much more compelling towards social media algorithms than what you actually need to know in order to be a competitive trader or investor. So content like mine often falls between the cracks and isn't promoted to as many people as it should be because frankly, it's not as exciting. Falsities, large lies, just blasphemy is way more exciting and therefore beneficial to a social media algorithm and will be shown to more people than content that teaches you how to build a trading strategy using Python, how to call an API from the Federal Reserve Economic Database. Those are boring terms. And the idea that you can make a lot of money really quickly doing something that you can understand already is way more exciting. And it's going to be way more popular on all platforms, regardless of what their profit incentive is. It's just more exciting to hear you can do this yourself easily without ever getting a degree or studying anything or understanding math or understanding finance or knowing what gives a stock value. That's super exciting to hear. And it's way more popular to hear it online as well, just because of how it holds attention better than a bit more boring technical content. That's the first reason. There's another one. And that is that the generation that I was born in, my generation, generally has no hope. That's very sad, but it, it's it's true and I see it I see it every day. And it's part of what led and it's another really big part of what led me to start this channel. A lot of people in my generation financially have no way of seeing a future where they live a lifestyle that they intended on living their entire lives. The careers or professions that they fell into through the course of their lives, albeit through passion or interest or necessity doesn't look like it will be enough to support the lifestyle that they always had dreamed or intended on living. Maybe not even dreamed, just planned on living. So if your goal was a house, for example, and you studied medicine, it looks like medicine isn't going to pay enough anytime soon in the next 14 years for you to start making enough money to buy a house or even put a down payment on a house anytime soon. But that's an arbitrary example. Most professions don't look like they're paying enough to support a lifestyle that is, again, promoted constantly on social media. And it's not even the lifestyles that are being promoted. It's the lifestyle that was expected or 
had by the previous generations in their communities. It's sad. So this idea that they will never, regardless of how well they do in school or at their jobs, or they will never climb a corporate ladder or make consistent income growth throughout their lives sufficient enough to live a lifestyle that seems enjoyable for them, that creates desperation. Desperation is the real thing that drives people towards day trading. Nobody's excited by finance. Young people especially are not excited by the stock market. What they're excited by is unlimited money. And that is what is constantly being presented to you on social media as something that is always attainable. If you can just follow these simple tricks or look at this simple pattern or without ever getting a degree in finance or studying finance or anything boring, Python, statistics, calculus, math of any sort, and you can still make all of the money that you had always planned or dreamed or wanted to make, even though you don't have a degree or any level of profession in this space, just a hobby that will end up making you unlimited money. It's desperation. And that's the second reason day trading has become so popular. Now, the third part of this is day trading is also becoming one of the largest frauds in the space. Now, I go into extreme detail as to why day trading always loses. And I can make a lot of comparisons between going to the casino and buying stocks or selling options or foreign exchange rates, options, futures, you name it, in an efficient market. And the similarities become increasingly significant when you remove yourself from any degree of study in the field. So for instance, a lot of the content on social media suggests that price action, price action is the number one is sort of the secret code to understanding what prices will do next. All literature supports otherwise. There is no evidence that past price information will help you analyze future price information. That's not how it works. And people will often reference either outdated technical analysts from the 1950s, or they'll reference people who they've seen online that say they've done it and also teach you how to do it for a lot of money as evidence that it will work. But the statistics say otherwise. 99% of traders ultimately end up losing money after they start. And it's probably more than that. But we'll leave it at 99%. Now, if 99% of people lose money and there are thousands and thousands of courses teaching you how not to do that, that's indicative that something's going on in the first place and it, it demands further investigation by itself. But on top of all of the content that I've already made on this channel, I can say it to you directly. The stock market is a forward-looking entity and any content that makes it seem like past price information is the most important part of assessing where prices will go is a complete lie. And it is only popularized because it is understandable. And because it is understandable, it is more entertaining to see on social media than something you can't understand. And it is therefore promoted to more people. And when it's promoted to more people, more people get interested in this idea that they can make unlimited money because they understood some sort of pattern that was also understandable to probably an eight-year-old. You understand what I'm saying? It's a constant cycle of desperation, understandability, and accessibility. So that's why I make all of this content for free. Because if I'm being honest, my goal is to bankrupt everybody who is making this a problem. And a little bit of background on me if you haven't watched any of my other videos and just want to know a bit about who I am. My name is Nathan. I graduated from Babson College with a degree in computational finance. I've worked for multiple quantitative firms and I now run a business in the quantitative finance space. The product that I offer was originally designed for working for my university's endowment fund and it's since become more, accept, more applicable to people in the investment banking industry or just casual investors who want a pretty advanced tool. So that's a bit about me. And my goal is to make a professional level of investment research, like the tool I have and the course I provide for free, more accessible. Financial research is becoming more popular. Social media is popularizing it. 
but it's being popularized in a bad way. And our goal at Sharp Research is to change that and to make it professional. If your goal is to gain further returns than the standard S&P 500, which again, if you circle back to that desperation point or need to have what you planned on having, your goal is probably to do that, then you need to know how to do it right. And it's going to be a really big challenge. And I'm not going to give you the fun, exciting, social media optimized version of saying, and you can do it too. Chances are you won't be the one to do it. But if you are actually committed to getting it right, doing something that almost nobody can do, this is the channel to start. All you're doing is understanding how to test your ideas. I'm not giving you your own. I'm letting you know that whatever you come up with, if you cannot test it over a long-term period, break it into test and training sets, verify that you're not overfitting, find a pattern that actually holds water for more than 30 minutes of backtesting, then you might have a chance. But it's really disappointing. I understand that it's really disappointing to hear that it's probably not going to be you. But it's better to be disappointed than lied to, in my opinion. Maybe objectively. I don't know. So the end goal for Sharp Research is, of course, provide is to make a professional level of investment research more accessible to everybody and to bankrupt the people that have caused this problem in the first place. And it's a lot. We are already getting attention of some of the biggest frauds in the entire space, Tory trades or TJR trades. TJR is a big one and he made a whole video calling out a meme and demonizing the education that qualifies me to register his content as fraudulent, useless, lies. From top to bottom, he's one of the largest, most manipulative, manipulative liars in modern history. I think he will go down as being studied for how much money he has stolen effectively from the younger generation and people who can't think for themselves about this sort of content. So that's my rant. That's who I am. That's what I do. That's what our goals are. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me at Nathan at sharpresearch.ai. I highly encourage you to, if you're interested in sticking with trading just after this pretty disappointing reality check, start with episode one on my YouTube channel. I take you all the way through building your first moving average to testing multi-variable trading strategies and verifying that they are not overfit to a data set that you are looking at. We're going to keep building on this trading series that I've put together and making our analyses more useful, more applicable, and more interesting to a broader audience soon. And I'm really excited for what's next for Sharp Research and everybody who is here to follow along. So thank you very much for being here and being part of this slow and enjoyable process of teaching everybody what trading is really all about. This space is not anywhere near as simple as many people are going to make it out to be. So until next time, stay sharp.